Right, what we're going to start doing is we're going to start by cleaning out the crankshaft. There are three oilways in the crankshaft, the T160 crankshaft, uh, and they need to be cleaned out. Now basically what happens is you've got two main bearings here and they run in the crankshaft, uh, in the uh, crank cases and oil comes up through the crank cases from the oil pump it's pumped up through drillings and holes in the crank cases and it comes out here at the main bearings that's the first place it goes to under great pressure and then we've got these drillings these holes in the main bearings i think we can see them yeah uh, so the oil uh, it, it comes up uh, there to feed the main bearings but at the same time there are oilways drilled through the crankshaft that meet up with these with these oil holes and so some oil comes to the main bearing and some through these drillings uh, let's have a look yeah so uh, so there's the oil comes up and uh, goes to the mains and then down through those holes and up on the drive side to one big end then just to complicate matters because of course it's a triple on this side of the engine you've got two drillings as one drilling goes over to join this main this main to get oil from there for this big end but there's another big end over here so that also has a drilling which also goes to that main bearing so the thing to realize is that there are two main bearings and there's oil coming up through the uh, through the crankcases to these main bearings and then down through these holes to feed the big ends but on the timing side there are two drillings and so that time that bearing uh, serves two big ends now this bearing feeds one big end so obviously that's a bit strange but it's fine now what you can do on race bikes and that what what some people do is you can put another drilling on this side so uh you've got you know more more even oil feed but you know that's only really on race bikes but just be aware that there's one main bearing uh and that feeds both big ends and this main bearing feeds one it doesn't really matter but the thing to do is uh, is to clean these oil. These drillings have got to be cleaned out. So at the end of each of those drillings is a plug, which I have already removed. And they're a complete nightmare to remove. It's even worse to try and do the damn bag that they're in. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. I'll have to pause the damn video to undo a plastic bag, for God's sake. Oh, come on. Thank you right so there's there's a little there's a little uh a, a little screwed threaded uh, sort of um, grub screw in the end of each of these oil ways obviously to seal them off because obviously the hole's drilled then you want to seal it so the oil just comes out of the the big end not not pouring out of there and they're a bit of a nightmare to remove um and i normally get the engineers to do it but lo and behold in my case someone has actually already removed them at some point in the past and mine have been replaced with an Allen key, which is what you do. You basically take these grub screws out, which have normally just got a normal, normal slot for a normal screwdriver in, chuck them away, and then replace them with these new grub screws, which are Allen key. Hey, but mine are already done. So you take those three out, and then what we're going to do is I'm going to thoroughly, 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 you can see the crud starting to come out here. Thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly clean these uh, these drillings, uh, and I mean thoroughly, because uh, for a start, you know they they need cleaning out, and also, uh, you know, because they haven't been cleaned out since I don't know when, but also of course the crank's been ground, so uh, any grindings have gone down these these holes, so. I need to clean out the holes, all the drillings, all the oilways, all that will be thoroughly cleaned out. I'm just starting with this brush 
I mean, you can just see the, the crud that's starting to, to just fall out. And I've already, I've already, as you've seen, I've already run uh, brushes down some of these holes. But that's what I'm doing is I'm just going to keep cleaning these out and cleaning these out. I think I'm going to have to use a. I don't, this brush is too uh, big for the for the big ends. I'll have to find something smaller. I think that's my smaller oil, my smallest oil cleaning brush. So I don't think I'm going to find anything. Well, I'll have to find a small wire or something to clean it out with. And then what I'll do is I will flush it, flush the whole thing out with white spirit, and blow it out with compressed air to make sure everything's completely clean and then I'll put the grub screws back in and then I will immediately put some uh, assembly lube assembly lube not oil or I'll put assembly lube on the uh, bearing faces to stop them to stop them rusting uh, once I've finished cleaning it um, I'll mention this probably again always use assembly lube I don't think it matters what assembly lube you use I just use this one because that was available on the on the web um, but do do use proper assembly loop when rebuilding an engine don't just put engine oil on it because the engine oil's thin and it will slowly um, disappear from the bearings and so on whereas this is designed to stick and it's designed to help brand new uh, surfaces uh, bed in so always use assembly loop on all the any bearing surface in the engine when you're rebuilding a new an engine for the first time okay so i'm going to carry on cleaning these out uh and as i say i'm going to clean them out then wash them out with white spirit then then compress there and only when i'm totally totally sure everything's okay then i'll put assembly lube on and i'll put the grub screws back in to the end of those oil ways right yeah so uh just using a bit of white spirit now, trying to get the uh, got a bigger brush, just to see if I can really get the crud out of these, out of these oil ones. Yeah, it's better. And so on, I'm going round and round, and getting as much out as I can, because, of course, the thing to remember is when you start the engine, this the oil is going to be blasted through all these oilways at massive pressure to lubricate all the parts of the engine. And if you've got swarf and crud and that in those oilways, instead of the the bearings being lubricated with oil, they're just going to be immediately all that grit and stuff is going to be blasted straight into the bearing. So you know it's going to be a, a, a worst case scenario. So what you want is nice clean oil ways, lovely and clean, and then all that lovely new fresh oil, and that goes and lubricates those bearings, and they're all lovely. So you've got to make sure that everything's completely clean, both on the crankshaft that we're doing now, and also, of course, uh, on the uh, crankcases that we'll be doing uh, later on. So I'm going to carry on cleaning these with uh, white spirit and brushes, and then I will... Sorry, I'll then um, uh, blast it with a, give it a compressed air blast, make sure it's completely clean and there's nothing in there, and then I'll put the plugs back in. But only when I'm completely sure that that's absolutely, totally clean. Right, we'll give it some air.
Okay, uh, and now I'm going to clean it all again, repeat the process, and I keep going until when I blast it, nothing horrible comes out. Right, I've now I've cleaned the uh, crankshaft several times uh, with white spirit and with brushes, and I've blown it out, and I'm now happy that it's clear. Because, of course, actually the worst thing you can do is to half clean out a crankshaft. It's actually worse than not cleaning it out because all you're doing is loosening all the gunge and all the horrible bits which are then going to get carried through by the oil. So if you are going to clean out a crankshaft, you make sure you do it properly. Right, so what I'm doing now is I've got these three, uh, the three grub screws, screws, the three uh, seeding cap plugs, and I'm just going to screw them back in. I'm putting a very, very light bit of... Uh, Loctite on just the merest amount. I don't really need sealing, but it's just for peace of mind. Just a little bit. Obviously, you don't want to put um, you know, anything like too much on because you don't want it going down the uh, down the oilway for obvious reasons. Okay, and and they just screw in to block off the ends of the oilways. Put them in nice and tight, obviously. That's the first one, and then I'm going to do the next two, and then we'll come back. Right, so I've put the uh, plugs back in uh, the oilway drillings, so that now, obviously they're sealed off, the oilways are clear, so when the oil comes up through the crankcases, it should get good pressure and nice clean oil everywhere. And what I'm going to do now is, all the journals are now beautifully nice and clean, I'm just going to put a little smear of, of reassembly uh, goo on, oil, just a little smear on each, uh, each journal, okay, and I'm just uh, putting this on uh, just uh, for now, because I don't want the journals to start oxidising. Okay, to start rusting basically now that I've cleaned them all off. And what I'm then going to do, because I'm not ready yet to put the crank, to put the big ends straight on and the uh, and the crankshaft into the crankcases, so they're going to be standing for a few days at least, and I and I don't want them to to rust. So uh, that's why I'm putting this on. But I've similarly then got a problem that this oil is going to attract dust. So what I'm going to do is I'm putting this on, the smear. I should put more on when we actually assemble the big ends and so on. I'm then going to put the crankshaft into this uh, plastic bag to stop, to try and stop any dust, etc. being attracted to the oil, which obviously wouldn't be good because you don't want anything on, this bearing, on these bearing surfaces at all. Um, I mentioned before about having uh, a radius. So when, when you... Um, and when the, the crank is reground, what you don't do is grind it flat right to the sides of the of the journals. Just a few thou before the before the journal meets the flange, you put in a radius, you put in uh, a slight curve. Uh, and what that curve does is it stops it, it creating a weak point. If if the if the journal was flat all the way across and there was a right angle there was a right angle join then where that right angle is that would be a stress point so that's why it's uh, you have a very slight uh, radius at the end of the journals to be honest i've never met anyone regrinding crankshafts who didn't know about putting a radius on because you know if you regrind if the business of regrinding crankshaft, about the first thing you know is not not uh, to go straight across, but always to leave a radius. Having said that, I don't know if it's different. Maybe for different, you know, maybe modern cars don't have it. I don't know, but uh, you certainly just, you know, if you're going to have it, if you have your, your crank reground, the first thing you want to do is just say, oh, we don't forget. Without, without trying to, you know, teach your grandmother to suck eggs and tell them their own job. To say, oh, you know, and of course there is a radius at the side, just for peace of mind. Uh, I'm sure that, you know, they'll know anyway, but... Uh, 
Okay, there we go. So I've just put a little bit of oil on, and that oil is antioxidant, basically. I'm going to add more. This is the assembly lube, but I'll add more when we actually uh, assemble things. But, uh, okay. I'm just going to put it now in this plastic bag because I'm not... I'm going to carry on cleaning all the other crank cases out and so on before and get everything clean before I'm ready to start assembling. And I don't want I don't want the journals to go rusty, but neither do I want them to attract dust. So there we go. I might even be able to close this bag up, which should be good, yeah I can. Hermetically sealed, wow, well, hey. There we go. Right, good. And then I'll put that aside and then we'll carry on and clean out all the crankcases and that that have been vapor blasted because they really will be full of, uh, of uh, all that vapor blast grit, which is a complete nightmare. You really need to get rid of all that because obviously it's abrasive grit. That's its job. And if it stays in the oil ways, then, well, you're asking for trouble. Anyway, crankshaft cleaned and ready for assembly.